You are watching WPTV, award-winning college television. Welcome back to the desk. We are just one week away from spring break. And you know what that means. It's one week until Pioneer Baseball heads down south to the sunshine state of Florida. Here to break down what's been happening at Jeff Albies is Tyler Cooper, Andy Gavin, Michael Milligan, and Daniel Carp. You know, the Pioneer season hasn't started exactly the way they've wanted it to, right? They've, they've lost their last six games. Daniel, I'll start with you. Despite the losses, what's been a bright spot for the, the Pioneers team in this early going? Shortstop Tyler Rubin hitting 304, which is third on the team, also has a 429 on base percentage. He's been really good. He's been a vacuum at shortstop. You know, he has a success in high school. He also comes from a baseball playing family, too, which helps, you know, a lot of success going on for Tyler Rubin right now. I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do for the rest of the season. Yeah, absolutely. He's been phenomenal. You know, last year he was he was good, and now he's stepping up in another leadership role. So looking forward to seeing how he continues his play. Andy, going on to you, what's been a bright spot for this Pioneers team so early on? I'm going to go with Ian Metzger. In 12 innings, he has only allowed two earned runs, four runs in total. He has eight strikeouts on the season. He's looked dominant to start the season. As the team gets ready to head down to Florida, look for him to get ramped up. I'm excited to see what he can do. Yeah, I mean, he, again, another player who's taking another step up into a role of leadership. Tyler, move on to you. What's been a bright spot for this Pioneers team? Yeah, a bright spot has been the freshman Ty Kobalakowicz. Um, he has been very bright for this uh, Pioneers team. He, in the game against uh, Witt, or RIT rather, he had three hits, three, th uh, three RBIs, and his offensive production has been great, and he's showing Coach Lottenham that he can be a staple early uh, for this Pioneers team for years to come. Yeah, get started young as a freshman, and then you work your way up to being a leader on this team. He's he's off to a great start, but Bill, again, we'll close this question out with you. What's been a bright spot for the Pioneers so far? Can I give it to my boy Tom Radigan? Right now he's averaging uh, .296 and has an OPS of 887. so oh, I mean, he's really numbers. balling right now, and he's leading the team right now in RBIs, and obviously that's a very important stat for them to hopefully improve and, you know, keep their winnings and, you know, try to earn some runs. Yeah, you know, we've heard the name, we, well, we heard the name from Tyler of, you know, a new face around here, and there's a lot of new faces on this Pioneers team for this season. You know, some freshmen, some transfers from other colleges. Michael, we'll start with you. Who's looking like a potential Rookie of the Year candidate? What I'm liking right now is Chase Geisler. Uh, in his first two games, he's had uh, 10 strikeouts. Um, you know, he went seven innings, actually, in the Saint, uh, you know, the John Fisher game. And, you know, you could really see that he was really having a nice performance, that he was getting settled in. The only thing he really needs to work on is just lowering that EIA, uh, ERA, my apologies. And it's like up in like the 6.4, 6.3 area. He just needs to lower that down. He does that. I think he's going to be a really great for the future of this Pioneer team. Yes, that was a solid baseline, especially in the rotation and the bullpen. It's it's really what you need. But we'll move on to you, Daniel. Who do you think is rookie of the year potentially? I'm going to go with a freshman, Robert Nathan. He looked good. He looked really good. Looked I mean, very good. Very small sample size, only five innings. You know, ERA high, but only five innings. You know, he's had a dominant career in high school, one a 115 ERA in his senior year of high school. You know, when you're playing se when you're playing in high school, I mean, there's players from going D1, D2, D3, playing Juco. So if you're, ra if you're putting up that crazy numbers against uh, in high school, there's no doubt you're going to have some success in the college. I mean, great family guy, so I'm, I'm very excited to see what he does in the, for the Pioneers. Yeah, no, he's been really good. Andy, we'll move on to you. Who's looking like a potential Rookie of the Year candidate? I'm going to say Ty Kobalakowicz. And, you know, he's looked great defensively. I'm excited to see how he, he pro progresses this freshman, his freshman year. In game one against RIT, he had three RBIs. He's batting 350. Let's see how he continues. Yeah, the, the average is something that this Pioneers team seems to really focus on, you know, throughout the years. Last year, so many people with over 300 averages, and he seems to be continuing the trend there. Tyler, closes out for this one. Who's looking like a potential rookie of yeah, the year? Yeah, I'm going to talk about the transfer catch O'Connell Lucky. He can be a potential rookie of the year candidate because the first game against the Bison, he immediately showed his defensive ability by, by blocking almost every ball behind the dish, which was very important. And also, he had, he's got some pop with the bat. He can spray the ball with, uh, to all parts of the field, hitting doubles and extra base hits. And he, he had a home run this year. Uh, to, to begin his season. So he's been very, very good for the Pioneers. Yeah, he's come, he's come in swinging, no pun intended, he, but yeah. he's been really good. Yep. But, you know, someone that we don't really talk about as much on the desk here is Coach Mike Lauderhand, and he's now in his 17th season here at William Patterson University after replacing the great Jeff Albies, of course, in 2008 with a phenomenal resume already. Tyler, specifically, we'll talk about this season so far. 
What aspect of Coach Lauderhand's game have you been impressed with? Yeah, I've been impressed with his bullpen management because I feel like he's been utilizing his relievers like Neil Talanovala in, in, in good spots. He, you know, and, and when, they, when they pitched, like Neil Talanovala, when he came in, he, he had a scoreless inning. Um, and he also, you know, uh, Nick Diaz has been pitching great so far in the reliever role. He's just been using um, his relievers in, in big time spots in this early going. Absolutely. Michael, move on to you. What aspect of Lauderhand's game has impressed you so far this season? I think a very uh, underrated part is actually just substitutions. So the fact that he's been putting in batters when you'd rather, when he needs him to take a break or whatever it is. Um, between first baseman uh, Kobe uh, Kobalakowicz and uh, Mainher, they've been they've they've been subbing in and out with each other, all just depending on who's hotter at the moment. It's just throwing off the opposing pitchers. That's what he's been doing. Small game like that. Yeah, Daniel. Um, I'm gonna go with that. The fact that he allows pitchers going deep in the games. I mean, almost all the games this year, your starting pitchers gone five plus innings, and they've been pitching exceptionally in that starting role. It doesn't the games really get decided in those seventh, eighth, ninth innings? So. When you're allowing your pitchers to go deep in the games, build up confidence, build up stamina. So, you know, I'm going to be looking forward to see what they could do at this, what, how he could start starting pitchers. I got you. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. Andy, quickly. You know, you said we never talk about Coach Lawhand. Let's highlight him real quick. Two years removed and winning an NJAC title, been named Coach of the Year twice. He has, he has six All-Americans he's produced, many All-NJAC picks. He has had a, he's had different lineups, different rotations. And, you know, he's giving players day off here and there. And, you know, he's just reordering the order throughout the days. He's just trying to get his offense going and see what they can do. Yeah, absolutely. He, he's someone that I feel like we should be celebrating a little more on this desk. He's a phenomenal coach. But the Pioneers match up against the SUNY Cobosco Tigers this Monday at home. Daniel, take us through this matchup. So William Patterson and the SUNY Cobosco Tigers will take a look at how these teams match up. Pioneers 1-6, and six, Fighting Tigers 2-4. and four. Pioneers a 243 batting average with... 270 for the Fighting Tigers, a 682 OPS and a 763 OPS for the Tigers, 595 ERA and a 616 for the Fighting Tigers, and a whip a little over 17 for the Pioneers and a little over 18 for the Fighting Tigers. Game's gonna be March 11th this Monday on Brave New Radio. Coop and I will be on the call for that game, and we'll be looking forward for that one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot we're looking forward to, looking for the Pioneers to get back on track, but we'll start with you, Andy. How can the Pioneers defeat SUNY Cobaskill and get back on track? Put the ball in play, limit the strikeouts. They have 80 strikeouts in seven games. As a team, they just need to put the ball in play, let the defense make a play. They struck out more than 13 times in two games this season. They're hurting themselves at the dish by these strikeouts. Absolutely. Tyler? Yeah, um, if the Pioneers want to defeat the Tigers, they got to score first, right? And if we remember last year when they played the Tigers, they scored first in that when they played them last year. So. If they can replicate that, they can absolutely win the game because scoring first and getting on the board is very important. Yeah, well, when you can take your farm. Yeah, you know, when you make teams chase your score, yep. you're making them take swings that they're not going to be wanting to take. Michael? I have bring home runners in scoring position. Honestly, I, that's like the main, you know, thing they need to go over here because, like, it's just simple. Like Andy was saying before, putting the ball in play, you do that, you bring runners home. Simple as that. It's just how the game is. It's just doing that. That's just baseball. That's just baseball. You just that's play just the baseball. game at its most basic level and you're good to go. Absolutely. Daniel closes out for this one. This one sounds a little crazy, but adjusting to the turf. You know, your home field advantage, you got to, well, during practice, you got to be, you got to be ready. You got to play in the turf. I mean, we've seen a lot of base hits that just got in through the, Infielders haven't been able to field cleanly because how fast the turf is. When you're playing on this turf, you got to practice and you have to get used to it. Just like home, any kind of home field advantage. In high school, we had the track in the middle of the court. We got used to it. So you got to adjust to that turf and you got to make those plays. Absolutely. So that's something you could hurt the other team Absolutely. by doing. Looking forward to that game. Looking forward to hearing you two on the call. Thank you. But that's going to do it from the 60 90 diamond. Let's swing it over to the 50 70 diamond for some WP softball next on Sports Desk. <laughs> 